Hello everyone, my name is Said Nasseri and from TV Seminar Series in this presentation I am going to talk about the stability assessment of initial shot grid lining using 2D continuum modeling approaches. Most of the underground excavations require support system to ensure stability for safe working conditions. Shot grid is one of the widely used support elements for shafts, caverns, and tunnels. Shot grid is a mixture of aggregate, cement, and water that is sprayed to the excavation wall to provide temporary support. It provides instant stability and holds up broken rock pieces from falling. The reentry time to shot gridded heading is the time required for the shot grid to reach a UCS of 1 MPA. In many underground mines, the reentry time is 8 hours. However, according to the results of laboratory tests, the threshold of 1 MPA strain can be reached within the first 30 minutes to 2 hours of curing. The mechanical properties of shot grids are required for the design of initial liner. These properties can be determined by considering the age of shot grid. In the field, the age of shot grid is a period from spraying shot grid up to next round of blast, in the case of drill and blast excavation. In order to determine the shot grid age and therefore its properties for the design, the excavation advance rate should be considered. Early age shot grid sustains ground load and may deform plastically if it's loaded beyond its load capacity before failure occurs. In this research, we have developed a methodology for the design of initial shot grid lining using 2D continuum and its continuum numerical methods by considering the excavation advance rate. In this research, finite elements program RS2 by Rock Science and the hybrid finite discrete elements program Erasu by Geomechanica are used. Both RS2 and Erasu are two dimensional numerical programs but are used to simulate a 3D excavation advance in this research. The shaft advance rate is considered to determine the corresponding shot grid properties. Finally, the minimum shot grid thickness will be determined based on the load and the strain factors of safety. Three main assumptions in this research are shot grid properties remain constant with excavation advance. However, in the field, Shot grid becomes stiffer and harder with time after installation. Although the excavation method for the shaft is drill and blast, the blast damage is not considered in simulations. Also, excavation boundary irregularities due to blasting is not considered. Therefore, a smooth circular excavation is used in simulation. This research has been conducted in three main stages. In the first stage, 2D finite element model is used to simulate the 3D shaft advance to determine the load factor of safety using convergence confinement method as well as the thrust moment diagram by simulating the shot grid liner using structural elements with elastic properties. This will be the focus of this presentation. In the second stage, the 2D finite element model is used to simulate shot grid as a material model with elastoplastic properties. This method allows for capturing progressive yielding and plastic deformation of shot grid. This figure shows plastic zone in the rock mass as well as the shot grids around the shaft in red. In the last stage, the 2D hybrid finite discrete element method will be used to explicitly simulate fracturing throughout the rock mass and shot grid and assess the stability of the initial shot grid liner. This method provides more realistic results for the stability assessment of shot grid but requires extensive calibration for both the rock mass and shot grid. This figure shows the simulated fractured zone around the shaft. The convergence confinement method, or the CCM, is a method that has been introduced in tunnel construction. It considers the ground response to the advancing tunnel phase and the interaction with installed support. 
There are three main assumptions in this method. First, excavation must be circular. Second, stresses should be isotropic. And third, rock mass should be homogeneous. It should be noted that in numerical modeling, non-isotropic stresses are also considered for support design using the CCM. Three components of the CCM include ground reaction curve, or the GRC, longitudinal displacement profile, or the LDP, and support characteristic curve, or SCC. These components will be briefly described in next slides. The GRC provides a relationship between internal pressure and the tunnel closure of wall radial displacement. Internal pressure is a pressure applied to the boundary of the excavation in the opposite direction to the in-situ stresses. Internal pressure is equal to the in-situ stress in the rock mass ahead of the face at cross-section AA prime, and gradually decreases at the face and reaches zero far from face where there is no face effect at cross-section BB prime. The LDP provides a relationship between wall radial displacement and the distance from tunnel face. As shown here, at section AA prime ahead of the tunnel face, there is no radial displacement because the internal pressure is equal to the in situ stress. At face, the radial displacement increases as the internal pressure is less than the in situ stress. And finally, at section BB prime, where there is no face effect, displacement reached to its maximum value since no internal pressure is applied to the excavation boundary. The SCC represents stress strain behavior of the support element used in the excavation. The SCC is shown in the GRC graph here. In the CCM, the LDP is used to determine the radial displacement corresponding to the tunnel face and the radial displacement at which the support is installed. The support factor of safety can then be calculated by plotting the SCC in the GRC. The factor of safety is defined as the ratio between the maximum load capacity of the support system and the load at equilibrium, which is the point where the SCC and the GRC intersect. In this study, the stability of shot grid liner used as a temporary support in a mine shaft with radius of 5 meters will be evaluated. This case history has been described by Rafi Renani and his colleagues in a paper published on rock mechanics and rock engineering in 2016. In this particular shaft, four extensometers were installed at a depth of 1.2 kilometers, and the excavation method is drill and blast. Here, the directions of major, minor, and intermediate principal stresses around the shaft are shown. As shown in this figure, the major principal stress direction is parallel with the axis of the shaft. Geotechnical data, including the strength and deformation properties of the intact rock and the geosite, and the magnitudes of in situ stresses are provided in these two tables. The support system in this shaft includes two liners. The first liner is the initial or temporary shot grid liner that was sprayed to the shaft wall three meters behind the face, and the second liner is the final concrete liner that was installed 12 meters behind the face. This figure shows a cross section of the shaft, including two liners, their distances from the shaft face, and the extensometer that was installed one meter behind the shaft face. The liner in blue represents the shot grid, and the one in red represents the concrete liner. Note that the excavation advance rate is three meters per 24 hours. This means that it took 24 hours to get from stage 1 to stage 2. Four extensometers were installed around the shaft at depths of 1.2 kilometers, just one meter behind the shaft face, as shown in this cross section. The first step was to simulate the shaft and calibrate the model based on the extensometer's data. For this purpose, a 2D plane strain model 
in RS2 was used to simulate the shaft. The radial mesh with quadrilateral elements with minimum element size of 13 centimeters was used to build the RS2 model. As mentioned before, this is a 2D model where 3D shaft advance is simulated. To do so, based on the CCM, the internal pressure reduction approach should be used. In this method, an internal pressure equal to the in-situ stress magnitudes is applied to the boundary of the excavation. The internal pressure is then gradually reduced to zero to simulate the 3D excavation advance, as shown by the arrows. The RS2 model was calibrated against the extensometer data. Here are two graphs which show the radial displacement as a function of distance from the shaft. The extensometer measurements are shown by solid curves for the first and second rounds of excavation. By comparing the results of RS2 model and the measured displacements using extensometers, it is concluded that the model is calibrated and can therefore be used to simulate the shot grid liner and assess its stability. The results of the calibrated RS2 model including the GRC and the extent of yielded zone near the shaft are shown here. Note that the maximum radial displacement is 22 mm and the maximum and minimum plastic radii are 8.3 m and 6.6 .6 m as shown here. In order to simulate the support system, the LDP is used to determine the wall radial displacement corresponding to the distance from the face at which the support is installed. This graph here shows the LDP for different ratios of plastic zone radius to the tunnel radius. This graph represents the tunnel closure normalized to maximum closure as a function of the distance from the face normalized to tunnel radius. Knowing the distance from the face at which the liners are installed, the wall radial displacements for the installation of liners are found as shown here. This figure shows the GRC along with radial displacements corresponding to the shaft face, the initial shot crit and final concrete installations. For example, the radial displacement corresponding to the shaft face is 5.7 mm, radial displacements corresponding to initial and final liners are 12.5 mm and 21 mm respectively. Next, the structural elements were used to simulate the shot grid liner with elastic properties. The structural elements used for the simulation of shot grid liner consists of several segments as shown in this figure. As mentioned earlier, the properties of shot grid and concrete are functions of their age or curing time. In the field, the age of shot grid was calculated to be the period from installing the liner until the next blast round, which is determined from the advance rate. In this study, based on the fact that the excavation advance rate is 3 meters per 24 hours, 12 hours was used as the shot grid's age. This graph shows the compressive strength of shot grid as a function of its age in days. The arrows show how the UCS was determined for the liners based on the empirical equations. Here you can see a summary of the liner properties based on their age that were used in numerical simulations. Two methods were used in this research to determine their load factor of safety for the shot grid liner. The first method is based on the conventional CCM. In this method, the intersection point of the GRC and the SCC is used to determine the load factor of safety for the shot grid liner as described earlier. The second method involves the use of the structural elements in RS2 to build the support capacity diagrams and determine the factor of safety for the shot grid liner. In this research, the thrust moment diagram was used for this purpose. This figure shows the GRC obtained from RS2 and the SCC for 50 mm shot grid liner. And this method 
the load factor of safety is a ratio between the PS or support pressure divided by PE or pressure at equilibrium. Note that PE is the point where the GRC and the SCC intersect. As shown here, the load factor of safety is calculated to be 0.48. Note that the GRC shown in this figure was obtained from the one point on the boundary of the shaft and therefore the factor of safety is calculated for this point. This figure shows the distribution of load factor of safety along the boundary of the shaft for shot crude liners of various thicknesses including 50 mm, 75 mm and 100 mm thick liners. Factor of safety equal to 1 is also shown by this blue circle. The results show that the load factor of safety for all shot grid liners is less than unity, suggesting that the shot grid liner is overloaded. However, the overloading does not necessarily mean complete failure. The shot grid, especially at its young gauge, behaves in an elastoplastic manner when overloaded and can sustain the load while deforming plastically. The second method to analyze the stability of the shot grid liner is based on the analysis of the support capacity diagram. Here, the thrust moment diagram is generated for the initial 50 mm shot grid liner. Note that the shot grid in this approach is assumed to be an elastic material. In this figure, Black diamond represents a factor of safety of 1 and the gray diamond represents a factor of safety of 1.4. The red circles correspond to different segments of the structural elements around the boundary of the shaft simulated in RS2. When the point is outside the diamond, the factor of safety for that segment is less than what is indicated by the diamond. If the point is inside the diamond, then the factor of safety is more than what is indicated. In this diagram, you see that some of the points are outside the black diamond. Therefore, the factor of safety for these segments is less than one. In the figure on the right, some of the segments are highlighted in red, while others are blue. The red segments have a factor of safety less than one. In other words, they are overloaded. This analysis indicates that about 60% of the segments for the 50 mm shot grid liner are overloaded. And here we have the thrust moment diagram for the 100 mm shot grid liner. Although the thickness is increased, there are still some points outside the black diamond. In this case, about 37% of the segments have a factor of safety less than unity as shown by red color. Again, note that overloading of shot crate means that the support system has reached its maximum capacity. It is not possible to conclude that the shot grid liner will fail or not based on this analysis. This requires further investigation using a discontinuum method. The thrust moment diagram was also generated for the concrete liner. The thickness of concrete liner is 200 mm and based on the thrust moment diagram all the points are inside the gray diamond. This means that the factor of safety of the concrete liner is well above 1.4. This is expected since the shaft has already converged to about 92% of its maximum closure based on the analysis of the GRC and the LDP. Further analysis was conducted using RS2 by simulating the shot crit using a material model with elastoplastic properties. The legend here indicates the percentage of yielded elements. Blue means no yielding while red means 100% yielding. This figure shows the extent of plastic zone around the shaft. A closer view of the boxed area provides a deeper insight into the progressive yielding of the shot grid due to the excavation advance. This is shown in three stages. This figure shows the shot grid at its installation stage. We can see that the shot grid has not yielded at this stage. 
By decreasing the internal pressure indicating the excavation advance, we see that shot could start to yield from its boundary towards the rock mass. In the last stage, where there is no internal pressure, shot grid is completely yielded. Now the question is whether yielding means complete shot grid failure or it is just an indication of cracking. To answer this question, a RASU, which is a numerical program based on the finite discrete element method, was used to explicitly simulate shot grid fracturing. Here we see the Erasu model of the shaft and the excavation damage zone around it. The excavation advance was simulated using the core softening approach. This model required extensive calibration for the rock mass as well as both shot grid and concrete liners. The results of simulation show that the 50 mm shot grid remains stable if the 200 mm concrete liner is installed as the permanent support. A closer view of the shot grid indicates that small cracks are developed in the shot grid by the time the concrete is installed. This means that some sections of the shot grid liner is overloaded and experience plastic deformation but not failed. Therefore, it is concluded that the 50 mm shot grid lining can be used as a temporary support until the 200 mm concrete liner is installed in this study. A mine shaft with four extensometers was simulated using 2D continuum and discontinuum numerical models. 2D numerical modeling was used to simulate 3D shaft advance using the internal pressure reduction approach. The model was calibrated based on extensometer data. Initial shot creates and final concrete linings were assigned different properties based on the shaft advance rate. Two methods were used for the shot grid liner stability analysis. First one was using the conventional approach based on the CCM, which resulted in a load factor of safety less than one. Second one was using support capacity diagrams resulting in a load factor of safety less than one. Concrete liner stability analysis based on the support capacity diagram resulted in a load factor of safety well above 1.4. Based on Erasu model, cracking was observed in 50 mm shot crate by the time 200 mm concrete was installed. Therefore, it is concluded that 50 mm shot crate will remain stable and can be used as a temporary support until the final concrete lining is installed. At the end, I would like to acknowledge the support from Dalhousie University, NSERC, and Geomechanica.